Hey, let's face it, there are a lot of different streaming options and options for managing your content out there, right? Many devices that can handle that. But is there a device that can handle uh, not only streaming, but also 4K content and even content not only 4K, but at 144 hertz? Well, on this episode of Input Output, we are going to dive into that with the VC100 by Roland. Let's check it out. a deeper dive now into the VC100 by Roland. VC100 has three scalers. Those scalers are the main scaler, the subscaler, and the USB scaler. The main scaler is utilized for outputs uh, such as LED walls or projection displays. The second sub uh, scaler is utilized for tech monitors or confidence monitors, even the gaming monitor. Both of these scalers can scale either in HD or 4K. And there is a final scaler, which is for the USB streaming. This will only stream in HD 1080 format. Now, all three of these scalers inside this unit here uh, can sort of see what input and what you can map what input to what output itself. So why don't we take a little deeper dive into the ins and outs. Now we have this hooked up presently and I'm going to sort of move from, from left to right here. So we've got USB host, maybe for firmware update. We got the streaming USB 3.1 uh, uh, connection. And then you've got the audio DB25. This is for balanced audio. So uh, coming in and out of your audio console from a professional or a, a, a more professional balanced approach where you have the unbalanced uh, top, which is the RCA in and out. We have the two HDMI. This is the in and the out. Once again, it can be HD all the way up to 4K um, and it can be scaled whatever way ins and outs. Uh, you can set the resolution. Uh, this, the, this is a perfect example, the way that we have this coming in. We actually right now are forcing it 1080 input and we're forcing it uh, to 1440 on the output. So it gives us a way of showing the scala scalability uh, of the ins and the outs. Also, you have through, in, and out on the SDI, and this is 12G SDI, meaning you could do all the way up to 4K on the SDI, on the SDI signal. So uh, SDI HD, uh, 6G, 3G, 12G, so you have uh, all of that. Then you've got your reference, which is right here. The reference is for black burst um, uh, syncing for your broadcast uh, switchers, uh, getting all of that in sync together. And then we have remote, and this is utilized for systems like uh, Crestron, Extron, AMX, and we could actually control the unit with hex values and hex commands. So from an audiovisual perspective uh, and integration element, I can take one of these and uh, control it. Now, the question is cost. What does something like this cost? Because there are a lot of different scalers and matrixes and scan converters that exist out there that we use on a daily basis in a lot of our projects. And there are uh, other scalers and scaling engines that are out there and scan converters that, uh, that we need for larger venues where we're doing massive LED walls and we have a lot of different types of resolutions, a lot of ins and a lot of outs. Um, where this is you know, something where you've got multiple ins uh, to, to one input to multiple outs, right? So you have multiple in, input types, but we're only selecting one of those inputs and we're sort of routing it where it needs to go um, uh, as an in and an out from a scaling perspective. Uh, so, so those particular machines that we utilize, the larger, the larger scalers and scan converters and the big show, show machines uh, that we'll use or event controllers that we'll use for some of the larger events, they're in the tens of thousands of dollars. So what would one expect to pay for something like this where you can take 4K and move that around and scale that from even 1080 all the way up to 4K? Um, 
And surprisingly, this cost uh, map is $29.95. So it is at a really reasonable price when you're getting into multiple scaling engines and being able to, to take information and, and resolutions and move them around, especially something that has an HDMI in or SDI in and then can go HDMI out to SDI out and USB out streaming all at different rates, uh, which, which what that does is that it gives the audience or the gamer what they're looking for, but it's simultaneously giving the streaming output what it needs. So uh, I'm gonna sort of run through uh, the processing side of things, uh, what this looks like. So you've got the main processor and then what the main processor is seeing. So right now the main processor from the input side is seeing channel two, which is HDMI, and that's getting it at 1080. Um, and then uh, you've got the output, which is SDI, and that's going out 1080. Now, SDI is hooked up to this display that is behind me here. So imagine this is our audience view. Um, and so now what I can do is I can go through the different processors uh, itself what or the different uh, uh, elements, what I want to send this input to whatever output and what that and the different values of that. So we're going to keep that there. And what we're going to do is then we go to then the sub processor. So this is where the scaling engine comes in. And I want to show you where the scaling engine comes in uh, and how this is working. So we have the input channel two HDMI as the audience, the SDI is seeing, right? But we have uh, coming in at 1080, 60, but it's going output HDMI out and that's going at 2560 by 1440 at 60. So this unit here is at a higher resolution. And as you can see, it's really no different from either one of these displays itself. And you know, obviously as I move the mouse around, uh, you can sort of see some of that content. So um, from a flexibility standpoint, I definitely think this is a great scaler, especially for the price. So great job, Roland. Uh, on on developing this, you know, we're, we'll probably maybe even do a deeper dive on this a little bit later, uh, perhaps. But when it comes to scaling and the simplicity, uh, hooking up the right cables, making sure that you have cables that support up to 4K, that's important. So if you are utilizing HDMI uh, 1.4, you may really want to consider what you're utilizing because there are some limitations. Obviously, you want something a little higher uh, with an HDMI cable that supports higher resolutions and, uh, um, from that standpoint. But if you are a house of worship church, if you're a small esports venue, this is a great bridge to get you into multiple ins, multiple outs, um, going to different displays, whether it's the local tech feedback or the gamer itself and what they're playing to the audience view, and then you need something to go streaming, it's a perfect opportunity. You're going into OBS or you're going into uh, another program like vMix and you need to see the USB uh, input for streaming. This will then show up uh, in, 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 your, um, in that particular software. So as always, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because that's really important. We're gonna be doing more and more videos on input output. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, we are in our new set. And so we've actually been developing this set for a while, making sure that when we do product reviews, we have everything laid out for us, nice and easy, uh, so that we can uh, sort of do very thorough reviews, not only from a camera perspective of me looking at you, but obviously we have the top-down camera that's going to show you at least the, the eagle eye or the bird's eye view uh, of the actual product. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit that like button, and always uh, comment below, and we'll see you on the next episode of Input Output.